Hey, how's it going? So, I'm sure that a lot of you know about Roblox's Ready Player 2 event. It's been the talk of the town for the past week, and I'm sure many of you were working on getting all the relics to obtain the meta shades. A lot of people were excited about this event. The last two events Roblox hosted, the Lil Nas X concert and the Roblox RB battles, seemed like they were giving another shot at events, and they were starting off strong. I had a blast with the Lil Nas X concert, which I tried my best to make a video of it, which you can watch by clicking on the top right corner. While the RB battles are not my cup of tea because I'm not into many star creators, many fans seem to have fun with the event. Ready Player 2 was the next event in line for Roblox to try and rectify their past mistakes. After all, the hype surrounding it was mostly due to the previous Ready Player 1 event. Ready Player 2's event brought back many things that made the Ready Player 1 event so successful. An example is solving challenging puzzles to get rare prizes if you're quick enough. Besides, the 7 different relics the event offered were items that looked pretty good. They were items that can be used for various looks, appealing to old and new players alike. At the same time, they have seemed to fix a few of the problems the Ready Player One event had, including increasing the number of winners for the extra rare items. In the Ready Player One event, only one person could get the item at the end of the challenge, the Dominus Venari. That winner was Roku, and let's say that allowing only one person to get the prize was a really, really bad idea. In Ready Player 2, the highest prestige prize you could obtain at the end of the event, the Meta Star, was given to the first 77 people who completed the event. The Metaphones were given to the first 777 people who finished the event, and the Meta Shades were given to anybody who completed the event. The different tiers of rewards were a crucial fix for the Ready Player 2 event. Those who were jealous can no longer harass a single individual. Everyone can get at least one prize for completed the event, meaning that everyone could still be a winner. Now, I wasn't at the Ready Player 1 event when it happened. Still, playing the selected games for the Ready Player 2 event, I noticed how well the game developers incorporated the event into their game. A massive problem with Roblox events in the past is that the games you play to obtain the prizes don't put much effort into them. The games I've played on prior events were not that good. They either did not take a lot of effort to get the prizes, relied on chance, or were utterly unfair. As a result, getting a prize wasn't fun at all. Oh, I have to get the one map the item is on? Okay, that's really easy. Oh, I have to win 10 times against an entire lobby to win the prize? Such a shame that won't happen because of the level 100 sweats that will stop me from getting the reward. I'm pretty sure you get the point. Roblox's events in the past were hit or miss. They were just cheap ways for Roblox to get funded by various sponsors. I feel like the Ready Player One event was so successful because it stood out against the traditional events that Roblox hosted. It required collaboration to solve the tricky puzzles that it had to offer. There was an end goal that motivated players to do the event in the first place. These are things the previous events were lacking, and all of these things were transferred over to the Ready Player 2 event. Playing the Ready Player 2 event was a lot more enjoyable than any Roblox event I've played so far. None of the games had an RNG aspect to it, and it took skill and dedication to solve the puzzles and obtain the items in the event. I'm sorry to say this, but as a game developer myself, it isn't enjoyable when developers lazily add the RNG to add variety to the game or make something more challenging. Some good developers properly utilize the RNG to make a game more entertaining to play, but that is only a needle in a haystack. I'm sure the developers involved in the Ready Player 2 event knew that they shouldn't make RNG the primary aspect of getting a relic. There are only a few occasions where the RNG is present in the event. Piggy, Bee Simulator, and Dungeon Quest use the RNG to randomly generate codes the player needed to solve. Sharkbite used the RNG to randomize falling projectiles for the boss. 
And while the randomization in Shark Bite did make the relic incredibly hard, because I died 10 times before finally defeating the stupid boss, other relics didn't get their difficulty from chance. For example, I struggled a bit with the Piggy relic because of the final bit where you had only one attempt to push the buttons in a specific sequence. That was with cooperating with two other players, speedrunning all of the events we had to do beforehand. The bad business event was obnoxious in the beginning because finding the unicorn pieces was incredibly difficult. There are also fake pieces along with the legitimate pieces that just made the challenge even more ridiculous. If it were for Creedcraft's tutorial on this relic, I honestly would have given up on this relic because these unicorn pieces were ridiculously hard to find. I was like walking around the map for like 10 to 15 minutes on a private VIP server and let's just say I wasn't finding the proper unicorn pieces that were needed to assemble the unicorn. My god that was annoying. Hopefully these examples should prove that there could be other things that can make a game challenging. A lot of people said that the dungeon quest event was difficult, and I would say the only hard part with that event was with the lanterns because of how fast they flashed and how you had to read them. If you didn't record a video of the sequence, you were pretty much screwed. Other than that, I managed to beat the boss in one attempt. However, just because there were things that Roblox improved upon in the Ready Player 2 event, that doesn't mean that the event didn't have mistakes. The number one mistake was the glitches. Oh boy, were there plenty of glitches throughout this event. When I was trying to get the relics, I have had to deal with prolonged loading times when joining games, even through VIP servers. From my experience, Sharkbite had the worst glitches. The boss fight broke on me and the teleportation failed a few times, which only added to how annoying this relic was to get. And due to Roblox's servers having problems, people came across glitches where they weren't proceeding to further steps, despite doing previous steps correctly. Also, some people had issues with getting the shades after getting all 7 relics, and I just want to say that all these people were unlucky because I've never had any of these problems throughout my experience. But as I said, I've come across several glitches myself, so it's not like I was super lucky. The second thing that went wrong with the event was the exploiting. Now, this was inevitable. When you have rare items, it gives you bragging rights to everyone else, saying that you are one of the very few people to have an ultra rare hat. So of course, it wouldn't be surprising that people will cheat and lie their way through to get what they want. I feel like this is why Roblox stopped making limiteds a long time ago and won't be making another limited anytime soon. Suppose you have scarcity on a virtual platform and don't take the proper security measures to ensure those rare items remain to their rightful owners. In that case, those scarce items can become lucrative and can open up a black market where the value and power from scarcity can fall into the hands of the greedy and undeserving. Inadequate security is one of my genuine criticisms of the Roblox platform. The security practices that Roblox has for their users is at minimum outdated and weak. If you don't understand what I'm saying, the only source of two-factor authentication on Roblox is through an email address. You cannot authenticate your account through an authentication app, not through a physical key, not even through a simple text. I don't have to be a cybersecurity expert to know that an email address is probably one of the worst ways to set up two-factor authentication. Someone can break into your email account and easily take the code to get into your account. It's stupidly simple. The fact that Roblox isn't making this their top priority priority 
says something about how they operate as a service. Another good example, someone can get into your account by just simply taking a cookie with your session information on it. I'm sure anybody in cybersecurity could see how atrocious Roblox's security is. And even the most loyal Roblox supporters cannot deny that security is a critical issue for the Roblox platform. It is something Roblox should work on if they want to see further success as a brand. You're probably thinking, how does this relate to the Ready Player 2 event? Well, the exploiters can wait until the last few relics and then just decide to exploit their way through the rest of the event so that way they can be the first to get the rarest prizes. The real people trying to go through the event get cheated. And those who did get the prizes legitimately have to keep a low profile. Otherwise, they will risk getting their account hacked. People like these will make Roblox not host another one of these events. And it sucks because this was overall a fun event to do. So what are a few things that Roblox can do to ensure an event like this can run more smoothly? I doubt Ernest Klein will write Ready Player 3, so what can we learn and apply to future Roblox events? The first thing is something that I cannot stress enough, especially as a game developer. Test your shit. Testing your code is something that my programming classes in college drilled into my head. And I want to preach the same practice to any Roblox game developer planning on participating in future Roblox events. Testing is super important because I think the only thing that you can do that is worse than a lousy game design is have an event that doesn't work. I would rather play an event terribly designed that fully works rather than play a good event that will glitch out half the time. There is only one way that you can fix bugs. Test, fix bugs, and test. If you don't know how to write a test suite, learn how to write one. A well-created test suite for your game will save you from 80 to 90% of bugs that players can come across in your game. It's also essential that you have a diverse group of players who are willing to beta test the game for you to help find additional bugs that you will not find in a test suite. Another way to minimize bugs is to develop iteratively. To put it in layman's terms, you create a small portion of your code and then test it shortly after to see if anything goes wrong. If you do this just right, the chance of finding bugs in a game is minimized and as a result, the game will run more smoothly. There will always be one or two bugs that will slip through the cracks, but usually those can be patched up quickly. So the most important thing to do to make an event better is to make sure that it does not have glitches. Test your code. Alongside that, this event, along with the predecessor and the hundreds of incidents related to account breaches, Tell us that Roblox needs to up their security for Roblox accounts. Add some actual methods of two-step authentication. An email is not an acceptable method of two-step authentication. Also, make backend changes on how session information is stored. Fingerprinting is a much better way of storing session information than a cookie. It is much harder to recreate a fingerprint than it is to take a cookie. The next improvement has to do with utilizing scarcity differently. Earlier in the video, I've explained how scarcity is a double-edged sword. So scarcity must be done so that legitimate people don't get cheated out of their hard work. A good analogy involves the huge scalping problem that has been occurring with the real world markets recently. Because scalpers have bots capable of ordering massive stock faster than humans, products can sell out incredibly fast, allowing scalpers to resell them for much higher prices. A good way that retailers can combat scalpers is to keep track of the orders that come 
come in and vet through them to verify that the order is legitimate. I feel like this should be the case for any item that will have value. You can gather a list of usernames of people who completed the event and have logs on whether they did the challenges legitimately or cheated. That way, people who worked hard for the item can get the item, and those who cheated will have wasted their time. It comes with the cost of not getting the item right away, but it's much better when people who worked hard for the prize rightfully get it. And to be fair, I did read a twit longer that somebody wrote. They mentioned that there is no incentive to find the relics because they can watch a tutorial on how to get the relic, and I will have to disagree with them here partially. While you do ruin the event's puzzle aspect by not learning how to obtain the relic yourself, it doesn't take away the challenge that people face to receive the relic themselves. I find it funny when people complain that the relic is too hard to get on tutorials that tell people how to get the relic. At least you're getting told how to obtain the relic, taking away the difficulty of figuring out how to solve it. There's going to be difficulty in getting the items. That's what's supposed to make the event fun. If getting the relics was easy, then the event wouldn't be fun at all, and the event wouldn't have been as entertaining as it was. We know that the Ready Player 2 event was not perfect, and I could say the same about the Lil Nas X concert and the Roblox RB battles. The Lil Nas X concert teleported 1 million concurrent players, causing glitches for many players throughout the show. The RB battles had problems with some of the swords being too challenging to get, and the toxicity from Kreecraft's fans when he lost against Tanker. With every event that we will get from Roblox, there will be something wrong with the event, whether it's minor or something that can ruin the entire event. We all know Roblox events can't be perfect, but we should only criticize them when they stop putting the love and compassion into their events. Roblox will continue learning from their mistakes and keep developing better events. After all, I feel like Roblox events are the only way Roblox gets involved with its player base anymore. Over the years, Roblox has become less involved in their community by removing a lot of features. I mean, you do have their social media, but it isn't the same. Events are the only thing we have between us and in Roblox. Suppose we bully Roblox out of doing events like we did before. Well, in that case, Roblox and its player base can no longer communicate with each other, and severing that connection will create new problems. We'll complain about these problems, and we will have nothing to blame but ourselves. <laughs>